Welcome back to We Play Games. I'm Walker, and here we are in Vicky3 Academy about to do a basic country guide for Bavaria. So Bavaria is the third wheel inside of Germany. You're a minor power, but you're a pretty big minor power. You're considerably stronger than Saxony, for instance. And you actually have three states. So don't discount your, your power yet. In fact, less than a generation ago, you were allied with Napoleon and, and marching throughout Europe as part of the Confederation du Rhein. So don't don't discount your strength as Bavaria. You can form the South German Federation if you use this guide, um, and hopefully you can fight back against Prussia, Austria, and find your own place in the sun, either as a, an independent South German Federation, a new Germany, conquering Austria, some combination of all three. Live your best life as Bavaria. One thing that I, I like to do is just check out your monarchy anytime you're playing as a monarchy like this. Um, see what your monarch is like. Your monarch here is really bad. Your monarch is a romantic landowner. Plus 25% political strength of aristocrats is terrible. And we have a, a royalist petite bourgeoisie, so your monarchy needs to go. There are a couple of ways you can accomplish that as Bavaria. One easy way to accomplish it is to re-roll your Catholic church into a theocrat, reform the government, bring them in, and then just do random chance rolls on theocracy. You can't do that with a, a moderate Catholic church, but you can get theocrats with relative ease if you want one. Just re-roll into that. Another way, of course, you can get out of a monarchy is to get into a republic. I would recommend personally to move into parliamentary republic over presidential republic. I think presidential republic is really hard to make work right now because of the government ideology penalty, as well as the fact that the government size allowance might be necessary to have legitimacy at all. But there are multiple ways to get rid of your monarchy. Fortunately, in regards to your other laws, you're actually in pretty good shape. We start with serfdom abolished, slavery banned. We start with appointed bureaucrats instead of hereditary. We start in interventionism instead of traditionalism, or per capita instead of land-based. We even start with a school system. And we start an oligarchy, which is absolutely critical when it comes to making early game legitimacy and early game laws, because you can do a lot of different things when it comes to, to utilizing oligarchy. So as I said, if you wanted, you could re-roll into a theocracy here. If you're like a painful, insane person, you could roll into theocracy for Catholic Church and armed forces, and then have a majority for for theocracy. But you can do a lot of different things when it comes to, to utilizing weird governments together. Like, for instance, you can put the intelligentsia together with the, the landowners. You could even bring the armed forces in to serve alongside the intelligentsia, and then you could have a pretty big government support for um, moving into parliamentary republic on turn zero. So be aware that oligarchy affords you some really interesting tools when it comes to building a government that you don't have access to normally when you're in autocracy. Outside of aiming to remove your monarchy, I think you should also be aiming to make use of corn laws, but unfortunately because you're part of the Prussian market, you can't actually set your own export priority on grain. And so in regards to whatever laws you're working on at the beginning of the game, there's really actually not a lot. I think one of the things that you can try to do is to move down to freedom of conscience. I think moving into freedom of conscience, especially if you're going to remain part of the Prussian market, is very powerful because it means that all of the other German pops inside of the German market can move to you even if you remain in migration controls. Because getting into mo no migration controls requires a stronger industrialist. Moving into freedom of conscience literally only requires you that you move the, intelligen the intelligentsia into power here. In regards to your budget, you do have an enormous pool of authority. I'm going to recommend that if you are going the intelligentsia um, freedom of conscience route, that you go ahead and bolster your intelligentsia. And in this case, because we're going to try to utilize the armed forces being a Republican movement, a Republican ideology leader right now, we're going to bolster them as well. That that second bolster kind of just depends on what you're what you're doing. If you have, for instance, theocrats in the Catholic Church and you're trying to use them, then go ahead and bolster the Catholic Church. That's okay too. But crank very high taxes. You're in appointed bureaucrats, so do very high government wages. And depending on what's going on in regards to your armed forces, you could do um, either high or very high. We'll do very high actually um, for army power projection because that can give us an increased chance of getting a uh, back down out of our our food. 
move on to iron frame, set up a couple of consumption taxes. And because we're kind of far out from railway, you could put down road maintenance in Franconia and Bavaria, but I think your economy is small enough that it's okay to trade the road maintenance back back and forth as you're building. And we're also going to promote social mobility in Bavaria. If you're playing a very small country like this, then you get a lot out of utilizing prom promote social mobility. The larger your country becomes, the weaker a lot of the individual decrees become. But at this point in the game, I think Bavaria benefits very much from having a, a mo mobility in the capital. Build a couple of construction sectors, build a couple of tooling workshops. And then you have some interesting choices when it comes to your first technology. I think depending on what sort of RNG you can get out of your Prussia AI behavior, then it can make sense to just literally rush nationalism because you can potentially get the Prussian AI to help you gobble up the other members of South Germany, at which point you wouldn't even need central banking anymore. If you can just annex these guys um, using, the, using Prussia, then um, nationalism as a first technology makes a lot of sense. But if you're not going to go in that direction, then I'm going to recommend either Atmo or Mechanical into the other, into Railways, because that's just such a strong setup in terms of, of economic development. It really is necessary, especially as a landlocked na nation, to get to Railways as quickly as possible. Mind you, you don't have zero infrastructure to work with, and your economy is not going to be building at like 100 construction points per turn, and so you do have a little bit of breathing space in regards to your infrastructure. These technologies are not free. You're looking at almost a decade's worth of research, and so delaying this for too long can be really painful. For that reason, I recommend either immediately going nationalism and then hoping that you can form South German Federation, or just setting yourself up here. I would not go down the bankrolling direction with Bavaria. I think if you want to do bankrolling, then play as Prussia. I don't think your economy is big enough to do bankrolling. We're going to go ahead and begin and begin our diplomacy here um, by beginning a conquer state diplo play against Baden. We're also going to fully mobilize and fully conscript because I would like to get it so that Baden just backs down. So at the moment, Prussia is leaning Bavaria. So there's a reasonable chance that Prussia is going to jump in on our side and then Baden will back down. Prussia sided with Bavaria. Baden, are you gonna are you gonna make Prussia fight you? Why don't you just go ahead and back down? Why, why don't you just go ahead and back down? The tricky one is gonna be how do we how do we convince uh, Prussia to help us fight against Württemberg? Yep, Baden back down. Excellent. And now we can incorporate Baden. And now we can decide whether or not it's gonna be worth it for us to try to to absorb Württemberg. It says that Prussia might side with, with Württemberg, which means that they would be leaning in their direction. But yeah, I don't really care if there is a revolt by the the devout here, because we should be able to call Prussia in as our friend, and a Prussian ally is going to be enough to crush this pretty easily. Because now, because we annexed Baden, we do actually have a front line that connects all the way to their western territory. And also, important to note, they're not going to be able to start a revolution with just 72 radical they need they need a hundred. If you're aiming to remove yourself from Prussia's market immediately, then switching into freedom of conscience is not very important. But if you're aiming to poach even any migration before you leave, which I think you should, then I think it makes sense to go ahead and move into freedom of conscience. In regards to your economic development, we're just beginning here with a little bit of construction sectors, some tooling workshops, and some iron mines. So that way, A, we have our own little industrial loop set up, and B, we can help reduce the cost on our construction goods because the price of iron can be heavily dependent on what else, what is going on outside of your borders in a way that can be pretty dangerous if you're not contributing to uh, the the iron production and then of course that also means that if you end up leaving the Prussian market the cost of iron doesn't immediately explode your economy and by setting up a little bit of tooling workshops you can support your logging camps in the event that things go south. And of course, as you balance prices out, it might make sense to start feeding a fourth or a fifth or a sixth construction sector in. But I think starting with three and then uh, adjusting up from there is generally going to give you the best return on investment. And you do want to get a paper mill online as well, because the way that you're going to secure your position as a major power and therefore, you know, a, a power that Prussia can't just 
bully into being part of whatever Germany Prussia wants to is to utilize the fact that you have a starting arts academy get get this up to a size three four maybe five if you can export art to a couple of great powers then you can provide enough demand to keep these guys productive without subsidizing them and that should be enough to secure you an awful lot of prestige and therefore a position as a major power all right we're gonna start exporting some uh some fine art to people Oh, we have an opportunity for a general and the crown prince to kill each other? Sure, we'll let them fight. Oh, all right, cool. So we had our crown prince was assassinated. Don't don't count on that, um, but sometimes that can happen. Oh, great. And now we have an intelligentsia, so that's another way that you can like save your monarchy if you want it. All right, I mean, if if no one's going to join this this little war down here, I'm not going to be mad about it. You also definitely want to find a character that has access to some sort of offensive bonus if you're going to be attacking into, for instance, Wurttemberg, because you're otherwise you're just not going to have the stats necessary to push through. Well, we captured we captured part of their territory, and now we just need to hold on to it, and we will win this war against Wurttemberg. So all of our troops now can be sent back to defense. Meanwhile, look at that. We are up to a major power, and it's because we are the number one producer of uh, fine art. Bavaria at 7.82 units now gets plus 60 prestige. And so that's something that you can do if you're one of these small nations, whether it's Bavaria or Hanover or Sweden, whatever. At the beginning of the game especially, there really isn't going to be any meaningful amount of competition for fine art. And if you start becoming like the worldwide exporter for fine art, then your price of fine art is actually pretty reasonable. Like we, we aren't subsidizing these guys, they're making money and we're adding a, a fifth level right here and I feel pretty good about that. Heck, I'll add a sixth. So yeah, if you can, whenever you're fighting in Württemberg, one thing that I found that works pretty well is if you can bait them into attacking you, um, then that can be really, really useful because the, the stats are just going to be lopsided for defense in this this unit setup here because most people are going to be fighting with line infantry and mobile artillery against each other, which does have a pretty significant bonus to the defender. Yeah, so our units are just going to get more and more experience defending. All right, there we go. So now the only thing standing between you and being the uh, the South German Federation from this point would be annexing alsace lorraine from France or annexing Hohenzollern from Prussia. If we were to attack France, we would reliably be able to find a Prussian ally. But I think that's up to you and how you want to play it out whenever you are, are playing as Bavaria here. I think it's pretty easy to see that there are ways for you to expand as Bavaria. There are some serious limits, right? In order to become the, the South German Federation, you do need to either take Hohenzollern from uh, Prussia or you need to take alsace lorraine from, from France. So either one of those wars could be the one that, that gets you over the edge but you're going to need to do one of them. Then, of course, once you've moved into the South German Federation, if you want to become actual Germany, then all you need to do is go down to pan-nationalism, and then you can start uh, competing against the other, the other major players here. All right, that's Walker, and that's the basic country guide for Bavaria here on We Play Games.